Hey everyone, Reese here, UFD Tech's resident South African deal guy and daytime streamer over on our Twitch channel. And I just have to say that streaming is hard. It is genuinely hard. I've spent a lot of time over the last year speaking to other Twitch streamers, just helping them fix problems, troubleshoot settings, and just general advice overall. And I noticed a couple of common themes that popped up over and over. So I wanted to make a little cheat sheet of sorts just with references, general advice for you guys, covering settings and recommendations that can help make your life as a streamer easier. And that's what we're gonna do today. All right, so big scary topic number one, and that is optimized encoder settings. Everyone I spoke to was too scared to even touch these for fear of breaking everything and I 100% get it. OBS does a pretty good job with their auto settings recommendations these days, but going manual will almost always improve the quality of his streams. There's a lot of good technical information out there, but it's often buried in 40 minute long videos with no timestamps. And I know that most streamers are entertainers, not tech enthusiasts, so here's the good stuff. Now, what I'm about to say next is impossible to say without sounding like a massive shill, but you're gonna want to invest in an NVIDIA graphics card if you haven't done so already, specifically one with NVENC capabilities, the newer the better because they have made generational improvements to it. NVENC just has so much of an advantage when it comes to H.264 encoding at the moment, which is what Twitch uses. They are trialing AV1 encoding at the moment, but that's part of a beta program. But for now, part of being a successful streamer is actually streaming and not fighting your system all the time. Here's a few screenshots directly from NVIDIA with their recommended OBS settings for both Twitch, YouTube, and recording. I'll give you guys a couple of seconds to look through them, screenshot them, but I will also put the link to them down in the description below for you guys to check out later. One thing we definitely need to talk about though is resolution, at least when it comes to streaming on Twitch. The overwhelming majority of people that I spoke to are all streaming at 1080p 60 because bigger number better, right? The problem here is that Twitch has two tiers of bandwidth caps available. 8,000 kilobits per second for partners and 6,000 for everyone else. A 1080p 60 stream is a lot of visual data to try and cram down a tiny internet tube. So if you're an affiliate or under, I'd at least try experimenting with both resolution and frame rate. You could try switching down to 720p 60 when you're playing a more fast paced title. That way you'll keep all the fast paced action clearer at the expense of say clarity in menus and things like that. But if your content is more focused on say crafting or just chatting, then 1080p 30 could be a good way to optimize your bandwidth if there's not a lot of motion. What you lose in pure resolution will often be made up for in a less compressed looking overall stream, but this is definitely a case by case basis different content requires different settings. So please experiment. All right, speaking of visual quality, let's talk cameras. This is one of the harder ones to provide any recommendations for because everyone's content is different and it can get overwhelming very quickly. I will try and keep it short and sweet for you guys. If you're gonna use one, you have three main options. That's a phone, a webcam, and an actual dedicated camera. A phone is a great starter option because almost everyone streaming has one. And nine times out of 10, a modern phone camera sensor is gonna be better than anything you can find in a cheaper webcam. Setup is usually as easy as loading an app on your phone, your computer, plugging a USB cable, and you're good to go. The big downsides here are that you still need your phone to do phone things, and that can get a little awkward at times, but also keeping it plugged in constantly can be very detrimental to your phone's battery health long-term. A dedicated webcam is a good option for most people. This is what I recommend to 90% of streamers. And there are a few very good stream focus ones out there like the Razer Kyo Pro, the Elgato face cam lineup, but also on the enterprise side, like the Logitech Brio 4K makes for a great low light camera, but also lighting is a big part of this. You can make a cheap webcam look good if you have good lighting. But then when we get onto actual cameras, diminishing returns kick in so very, very fast. And you really have to ask yourself, is it worth dropping a grand or more on a full camera setup? So that's a camera body, a lens, a dedicated capture card for it, all for having you potentially shrunk down in the corner of your stream while everyone's watching the gameplay. If your main focus is just chatting or crafting style content, this could actually be a very good investment for you. So there are a few key things to keep in mind, like do you have a way to keep the camera powered either through USB or a dummy battery? And does it have a clean HDMI out that you can then run to a capture card? Because you'll want to avoid any built-in webcam capabilities over USB that your camera might have. This all came about as an afterthought for most cameras when everyone is switching to work from home. And oftentimes these modes have no manual control, run at a lower resolution or have choppy frame rates. Why buy an expensive camera at that point? Just use a webcam. Now there are two OBS specific plugins that I'd like to bring to your attention. The Move plugin by Exceldra. This is my bread and butter, my desert island choice. It's the MVP of making your stream look more professional in seconds. You can set it up to move different sources of your stream around seamlessly at the press of a button. It's great stuff. The other is the encoder region of interest plugin by Rodney. This lets you set up regions of your stream for your encoder to prioritize over others. So you can maintain sharpness on your webcam at the expense of your game or keep a specific text box with important stats always legible and not getting compressed too heavily. A good looking stream will always make a good first impression, but arguably what has a bigger impact on whether or not a first time viewer will actually stay for a stream is 
your audio. Proper gain staging, audio processing, and good mic technique will go a long way here, but the number one issue that people came to me for help with was fixing their bad room acoustics. So we're talking mostly echo, reverb, and just general noise that they have in their vicinity. And thankfully, the solution to this is a lot simpler these days with software. I'm sure many of you have seen the clip of Barnacles pushing RTX voice to its absolute limits with the leaf blower. And software solutions like this is what I'd recommend for 99% of people because I know it's not always practical to hang up big sound panels that aren't just the, the cheaper small foam ones that you can get from Amazon that don't always work so well. RTX Voice does require a modern NVIDIA GPU to work, but there are also good and free options like RN Noise, which is built into OBS, as well as things like Wave Clarity VX, which frequently goes on sale and it's what I personally use. I'll give you guys a quick demonstration of how I use it and how much of a difference it can make. Here I'm using an Elgato Wave 3 microphone, but I'll quickly turn off all the processing. You should be able to hear the ambient noise from my fan and the computer running. But the moment I turn on Clarity VX, you can hear that it almost immediately kills all the background noise, followed by a Clarity VX D reverb just to kill the slight echo in my room. Next, I do a little bit of EQ to tackle some problem areas as well as boost the low and high end frequencies pre-compression. And lastly, I'm running everything into Wave Silk Vocal for the final dynamics processing and a little bit of polish. You don't need a fancy microphone. There's so many good streamer focused USB options that have come out in the last couple of years that are absolutely phenomenal. You don't need that expensive Shure SM7B that everyone has because adding that and an audio interface just introduces points of failure and honestly audio troubleshooting is one of the most frustrating parts of this because half the time fixing it is just a restart and not changing any settings because it's just like that there are several tools that i can highly recommend that have become a huge part of my workflow and they're essentially just glorified hotkeys like the elgato stream deck and foot pedal having quick access to things without having to think is such a big part of it for me and that's why I highly recommend these. For example, I use my foot pedal as a fancy push to talk switch when I'm in Discord with other streamers. That way I can engage with my own chat without having to broadcast it out to them and their chat and potentially just annoying everyone. I also use it for quickly switching between my most common scenes, it just, it works. Now obviously you don't have to buy the Elgato one for this, there are many cheaper options out there. I just like the Elgato ones because they fit into this whole big broader Elgato ecosystem and it just makes my life easier that I don't have to think about things. I don't have to make sure things work together. It all just simplifies it for me. And that's a big part of this whole video is just simplifying your workflow in ways that work for you. Seriously, do everything that you can to simplify your streaming workflow. Find your minor annoyances and kill them as soon as possible, please. If you're having constant issues, the one specific piece of software that you use for maybe one or two funny redeems, ask yourself how important it is to your overall content versus how much frustration it brings to you. Out of everything that I've learned in this last year, this is probably one of the biggest pieces of advice that I can offer to other streamers. Scuff will always be a part of streaming. Sometimes it makes for good content, but always trying to troubleshoot tech issues all the time while trying to remain entertaining to others can quickly demotivate anyone. And it's part of the reason there is a lot of burnout in the streamer space. When I first started streaming, I was using two very different, very mismatched 4K monitors. I ran into the problem where the severe difference in scaling was causing my applications to resize the moment I would alt tab out. And this was ruining my screen captures in OBS and quickly becoming the biggest frustration for me in my day-to-day -day streaming. I looked to bigger streamers, specifically those who are streaming 10 plus hours a day for any potential solutions to my problems. And I noticed the large majority of them are actually rocking to cheaper, not cheap, but cheaper matched monitors. So I replaced what I had with two equal sized and scaled 24 inch 1080p monitors. It's not my ideal choice of monitors, but it solved what was my biggest issue in streaming easily. It genuinely might seem like a small thing, but trying to deal with it every single day while trying to maintain being an entertaining person for others is it's difficult. Now, this was only one of my personal examples. Your own issues might only become apparent after years of streaming, but once you identify it, do everything you can to eliminate it as quickly as possible. Because remember, not all scuff is content. Sometimes scuff is just scuff. I genuinely hope this video can help someone out there. If you guys are struggling with anything in particular, feel free to drop it in the comments and I will try my best to help as long as it's general enough. There's only so much troubleshooting I can do through a screen with no immediate feedback. Otherwise, if you guys have any advice that's personally helped you, feel free to share. I hope to see you guys again in future. Come hang with us over at twitch.tv forward slash UFD tech. You know, we do cool stuff over there sometimes. So cheers.